But first, the reason why we're here, an ambitious new exhibition with more than 100 works by the late Lucian Freud, and the first to focus solely on his portraits of those whom he collectively described as the people in my life. The world of Lucian Freud was one of extremes. He was an uncompromising, reclusive painter. And yet his portraits managed to capture not just the truth of what he called the human animal, but something of the human artist as well. Nowhere more so than in his powerfully strange self-portraits, which punctuate the show from first to last. Born in Berlin in 1922, the grandson of psychoanalyst Sigmund Freud, Lucien had an idyllic childhood, shattered by the rise of the Nazi party. His Jewish family fled to London in 1933, and a strong feeling of dislocation is palpable in much of his early work. Here we've got his very first self-portrait, painted when Freud was just 21, and I think it's another reminder that, yes, Freud, of course, he was a realist, but from the start he was also a surrealist, an existentialist, a painter of the human condition as fundamentally one of solitude, aloneness, vulnerability. It's a picture full of curious enigmatic details, most of which Freud deliberately didn't explain these iceberg-like shapes floating past him, this curious bird and this strange silhouetted man standing in the window behind him. The only detail that he did half explain was this feather that he holds in his left hand. He said it was given to him by one of his earliest lovers. Freud's love of women was almost as legendary as his love of painting. Over the decades, he married twice, had numerous lovers, and fathered 14 children. This double portrait of Freud with his second wife, Lady Caroline Blackwood, was the last he painted in the tight, nervy style of his youth. It's a dispassionate, remote picture bordering on the cruel. In fact, Lady Caroline herself said she was dismayed to be painted at just 22 as so distressingly old. Freud was as interested in the criminal underworld as he was in the aristocracy. He would paint for long hours every day and then head out to the bars of Soho to unwind. It was a routine that left little time for his children. Freud often placed his own distinctly unconventional family relations at the heart of his work, never more so than in this picture, large interior W11. It's a microcosm of Freud's rather messy private life. We've got two different lovers, two different children down here. It was meant to be one of Freud's grandchildren, a girl called May, but she was unavailable, so in Freud's words, he had to borrow a local child called Star, borrowed and bored. After all, he was known to take months, perhaps even years, to paint a picture like this. And indeed, sitting for him was one of the few ways that Freud's children ever got to spend much time with him. And yet, nonetheless, there's still that pervasive sense of alienation. Freud's style might have changed, but his approach, his view of the human condition has remained the same. One of the most famously monumental of Freud's paintings is that of Sue Tilly, the eponymous Big Sue of Benefits Supervisor Sleeping, which set the world record in 2008 for the highest price paid for a painting by any living artist, an appropriately titanic 17.2 million. Sue had been introduced to Freud by her close friend, Lee Bowery. Often with Freud sitters, you have the sense that they're very much his creatures, almost his pawns, that he's the chess player doing what he wants with them. But when he painted the Australian performance artist, Lee Barry, that most definitely wasn't the case. In these pictures, you've got a real sense of artist and sitter collaborating, almost perhaps battling with each other. Uh, Bowery took his own kind of control of the situation from the start. He didn't ask Freud whether he wanted to paint him clothed or naked. Freud went off, Bowery went into the painting room, and when Freud came back, he'd simply stripped off. He didn't make things easy for himself either. Look at that pose. Imagine having to hold that pose, leaning on the rags, leg up on the bed for months on end. 
Freud and Bowery shared an anarchic sense of humour and a love of London's underworld. The pair often dined together, Bowery entertaining Freud with lurid tales of his nocturnal exploits. Freud's assistant, David Dawson, saw the Bowery paintings come to life and eventually sat for Freud himself. I'd say the thing that puzzles me most about the picture of you, the ambitious yeah. picture behind, is not why are you holding the dog, yeah. <laughs> why are you lying in that position on the bed, but <laughs> whose are these legs <laughs> poking out from underneath? Well, they're my knees, they're my legs. It's an echo of my legs lying on the bed. Um, and it's because it's such a tall, long painting, we were trying to make some dynamic, make the painting work visually by having some life at the bottom of the painting. So it's you twice, but there's something slightly sinister about it. It's the, you think? But it's it's all nice. joking. I think it's joking. You, you might almost be expiring with your dog <laughs> on the bed, and then there you are, <laughs> having been covered by the funereal drape <laughs> underneath. <laughs> this is the passage of all life. It is it's very arresting. But I, I don't think that his paintings are about death. I think they're completely about life. I think they're totally life-affirming. And it is what it... I think there's so much humanity in them that it is about what it is to be alive. This exhibition reveals, for the first time, Freud's poignantly unfinished final work. And I gather there's a documentary that actually shows some footage of, of, of Lucien working. Yeah. Yes, there is. Throughout my friendship with Lucien, I'd always taken photographs, like just still photographs. Um, and as technology improved, suddenly my little digital camera was a little movie camera, and um, I've got film of Lucien painting as I'm sitting. You're painting you? Yeah. So, but I'm, so you're seeing what I'm seeing. You put your knee forward. Yeah, absolutely. Aged 88. This was Freud's last day at work. Yeah. And that's the only known footage of him yeah, yeah. painting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Very well. so, it's a good thing to have caught. I think it's proper, yeah.